Well, hey, y'all. Uh, I'm Rob Woodset. I'm Vice President of Historical Society. Uh, tonight's program is going to be done by Denise Cunningham. And before we get to that and I introduce her, uh, we have a silent auction. This original watercolor that's right back behind me. It's done by uh, Meredith Miller and it was donated by Daryl Miller, who is no relation to Meredith. Uh, there's going to be an online silent auction. And we hope to have it running starting next Monday. Uh, the painting is 28 inches high by 38 inches wide. And the frame is 34 high and 45 wide. So it's a pretty good sizable picture. We also have this coming up. Our antique road show yard sale fundraiser on Saturday, April 17th, and we do need some volunteers to help with this. It'll be from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. in the road show from 11 to 2, and you can bring one item per person to get appraised for free. Otherwise, it's going to be a donation of $5 to the Historical Society for the rest of them you do. Anything else we got, Pat? All right. Here we go. Denise is going to tell us about missing landmarks in Broward County. Broward County. Um, welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, this is one of my favorite topics. This is actually the fourth time I've done this presentation. I did it for the Broward County Historical Commission, the Hollywood Historical Society, and Bonnet House. So I'm glad to be doing it for you. And it's called Lost Landmarks, Gone But Not Forgotten. And photos are courtesy of the Broward County Historical Archives, the Hollywood Historical Society, History Fort Lauderdale, and Pompano Beach Historical Society. Okay. Located across from Deerfield Island Park, the Deerfield Beach Riverview Lounge Restaurant opened in 1938 as a private gambling club for guests at the Boca Raton Club. They didn't want to slum it there, so they in Boca, so they went to Deerfield. Long abandoned, the structure was torn down in 2003, and that's a picture of it being torn down in the bottom. The Pioneer Hotel and Cafe was located just north of the intersection of Hillsboro Boulevard and Dixie Highway. It was severely damaged in the 1928 hurricane and was never used again. The 1920 city directory described it as open year round, first class service, rates $1 per day and up. It offered the European plan, which meant a dollar a day did not, the dollar a day did not include meals, taxes, and tips. W. E. Pike was the proprietor. Next. This is one of my favorite buildings oh, yeah. that is gone. I remember that. The Wahoo Lodge was located at 3425 Northeast 16th Street in Pompano. It was built in 1927 and torn down around 1968. This stately home was built for Howard and Exum Jelts and W. M. W. Garbutt for $65,000. Can you believe that? It was designed by the well-known local architect, Francis Abreu. The house was located where today's Tiffany Towers East, a 14 story condominium at Northeast 16th Street off A1A across the street from 16th Street City Park. And for a time, it was used as uh, like a san san sanatorium for um, children and they uh, that had various diseases and they would actually bury the children in the hot sand as part of their treatment. Helen Landers told me that, Jerry. Okay, next. The Pompano Beach Bathing Pavilion and Dance Casino was located at Briney Avenue and Atlantic Boulevard. It was built in the 1920s by the Blount Brothers and was destroyed by a fire in 1954. The term casino was used to describe a building used for social gatherings, not necessarily 
a place for gambling, though it may have occurred there. <laughs> this is a, a really fun place. Does anybody remember Storyland? Oh, yeah. The amusement park Storyland was located at 801 Federal Highway in Pompano, where the Island Club and Waterford Point is today. It opened in 1955 and was destroyed by a hurricane, Hurricane Cleo, in 1964. Uh, the Hillsborough Beach Lighthouse Keeper's Cottage was built in 1907. It was originally located by the base of the lighthouse, but was moved to the grounds of the Hillsborough Beach Club. It was torn down in 2005. And before it was torn, right before it was torn down, my husband and I went there and must have been 95 degrees. And we went through the entire structure and took photographs of everything. There was a lot of termite damage, so the Hillsborough Club didn't think they could actually save it. It was it was a tragedy, really. Um, the Hillsborough Beach Club was once the Lake Placid School for Boys. The school was known for catering to millionaires' children. And Frederick Clay Bartlett, who built Bonnet House in Fort Lauderdale, his son Clay attended the school there, and summer sessions were held in Lake Placid, New York. That's the name of the school originally. The small community of Hacienda Village was located near State Road 84. The village was incorporated in 1949. Collecting fines for issuing speeding tickets was the village's only source of revenue. Their charter was revoked in 1984 after they ticketed a state representative. The area is now part of the town of Davie. And this is it during the flood. The Davie Post Office and General Store was located on the south side of the New River Canal. The store was built in 1912 and torn down in 1940. Note in the middle of the picture, the outhouse in front of the store. <laughs> and, and you notice that it, the, it empties right into the canal. Right under the new building. That's that building. The amusement park Pioneer City was located, located across from Flamingo Gardens in Davie, today's Flamingo Gardens. It opened in 1966 and was closed in 1968. It featured a steamboat and had gunfight reenactments as entertainment. The elegant K Pop Tree restaurant opened around 1970 on the site of Pioneer City in Davie. It was torn down around 1990. The site is now Long Key Nature Center, a protected area with trails and rental facilities. And you can still see in the bushes some of these remains of these columns yet today. Is the K-pop tree here still? No. The Chapman House was an early Davy settler's home. It was restored by the Broward County Parks Department only to burn to the ground several years ago. The B.S. Crutchsank building was located at 3334 North Dixie Highway in Oakland Park. It was built in 1926 and was demolished around 2003. It is now an empty lot. Fine looking building. Okay. This is one of my favorite places that are no longer here in this area, the Wilton Manors gates. They were located at the north end of Wilton Manors at Five Points, what is today Five Points. They were built around 1925, and their architect was again, the local famous architect, Francis Abreu. The Wilton Manors developer, Ned Willingham, used the main tower as an overlook for his sales pitch to prospective residents. The landmark gates were torn down between 1958 and 1962. 
and Helen Landers, the former Broward County historian, used to tell me stories of playing up in the tower when she was a little girl. You knew Helen, Helen Landers. I introduced her to her. Okay, the Fort Lauderdale Country Club was located at 415 Country Club Circle in East Plantation. The club was built in 1926 with a Spanish influenced design and that was popular in the 1920s uh, in the boom time architecture of Fort, of Fort Lauderdale in Florida. And the architect of the clubhouse was again, the local famous architect, Francis Abreu. It was demolished in 1982. Fine looking building. Yeah, it's cool. The town of Andy Town was located at the intersection of US 27 and I-75 on eight acres of land bought by Andrew Hulus in 1948. In its day, US 27 and I-75 were two lane roads and had only one traffic light. Andy Town had a typical combination gas station, convenience store, and restaurant. It lasted until 1979 when Superhighway I-75 was built and Alligator Alley was expanded. And that's a 1967 aerial of, of the... This is a fun place. This was the Upside Down House, which was located in Sunrise Golf Village. Now. Sunrise was originally going to be called Sunset, but they wanted to um, sell it to people who were retiring and they didn't want to have it associated with the sunset of their life. So they decided to call it Sunrise, even though it's way out west. Um, so this was originally on Northwest 12th Court, but it was moved several times to other locations. It was a complete house constructed upside down to generate publicity for Sunrise Gulf Village. Uh, the house was completed in 1960 at the cost of over $11,500. It had a real automobile that hung from the ceiling of the carport. Thousands of people visited the house each week. It was dismantled in 1970 to make way for a more conventional home. The Fort Lauderdale City Hall was located at 109 to 111 South Andrews Avenue. It was built in the early 1920s and the architect was John Peterman. Kind of an interesting looking building. The City Hall building was demolished in 1946 to make way for a Burdines department store, which is now the current home of the Broward County Government Center, which was never built as a government building. And you can tell when you go to do business there. <laughs> They're thinking about tearing it down and putting it in a new one or refurbishing that. In 1926, Seminole families moved from on the New River in downtown Fort Lauderdale to the then remote Dania Reservation. And, but they had originally been around where downtown is now. Real estate prices had made the land irresistible to investors, so the Seminoles had to go. And uh, Betty Mae Jumper, who was in charge of the, this group of Seminoles at the time, met with Easter Lily Gates, or not Easter Lily Gates, Ivy Stranahan, and Ivy talked them into moving to the Dania Reservation because she thought the living conditions would be better for them. Riley's Grocery Store was located at 206 South Andrews Avenue in Fort Lauderdale. It was built between 1930 and 1936. The building suggests Mediterranean revival architecture. The eye-catching checkerboard, checkerboard facade drew attention to this business. The Mercedes City Center was built on the site in 1985. The first Broward County Courthouse was located on South Andrews at the corner of Southeast 5th Street. The structure was built 
in 1910 as a school, then made into a courthouse in 1915 when the Broward County was formed. It was demolished in the 1950s. A former Florida Power and Light building is there today, I think. The second Broward County Courthouse was located at the northwest corner of Southeast 6th Street and Southeast 3rd Avenue. The imposing structure was built in 1928. The architect was John Peterman. It was expanded and remodeled many times over the years. The newest courthouse tower, the Broward County Judicial Complex, opened in 2017. Florida East Coast Railway train stations were located in Hallandale, Hollywood, Dania, Fort Lauderdale, Wilton Manors, Oakland Park, Pompano Beach, and Deerfield Beach. They were built in the first part of the 1900s. The Hallandale station in Broward is still standing. This is the Hallandale station. It was moved and cut in two and now serves as housing. And it's not on the train tracks anymore. And there was talk at one time of, of buying them, putting them back together and putting them on the railroad near adjacent to the railroad tracks, but I don't think anything ever came of it. But it would have been a neat idea. There is one of these Florida East Coast Railway stations in Delray Beach that's been restored. That's right along in its original location. They all look pretty much the same, except the Hollywood one. This is the Hollywood Florida East Coast Railway Station. Pretty fancy, huh? Mm -hmm. It was located at 402 North 21st Ave. It was completed in 1924 and was a radical departure from the other FEC station designs, which were all very much the same and rather plain. Built by J.W. Young, it was designed by Rubish and Hunter. The building was demolished in the 1960s in order to straighten out 21st Avenue. The station was located between Taylor and Fillmore. The FEC freight, freight station in Hollywood was located at 620 North 21st Avenue. Why was this one so much different and who paid for it? Uh, I'm sure J.W. Young's organization paid for it because yeah. they wanted everything to look the same. So Hollywood was a planned city and everything was supposed to be uniform Mediterranean revival style and the other stations were certainly not. Uh, oh yeah. Dooley's Yacht Basin was built around 1938 on the New River in Fort Lauderdale. It made ships during World War II. The basin closed after the war Lauderdale Marine Center is now on the site, which was located just east of I-95. The Governor's Club Hotel, originally called the Wilmar Hotel, was located at 236 Southeast 1st Avenue in Fort Lauderdale. It was partially built in the early 1920s but construction stopped after the devastating 1926 hurricane. It would it would it remained vacant, just an empty shell for years, and it was called the Skeleton Building. It was finally completed in 1937 by Robert H. Gore. Mr. Gore served briefly as the governor of Puerto Rico, thus the name Governor's Hotel. He uh served so briefly in Puerto Rico because he uh, was not very in, uh, interested in women's rights and Eleanor Roosevelt's husband was in the presidency and he was removed. <laughs> the hotel was torn down in 1995. The generator from the building was moved to the green garage at Bonnet House and used to power the executive offices during power outages. That was there when I first started working there. Mm -hmm. uh, this was a beautiful building. The impressive Christ 
Christian Science Building was designed by architect Martin Luther Hampton in 1918. It was located at 100 Southeast New River Drive. It was the site of the first Fort Lauderdale Library and was later the Cerebral Palsy Clinic, which it was in this picture to the right. It served as the headquarters for the Broward County Historical Commission for many years. In 1992, the commission moved to a modern building, which was adjacent to the parking lot, and the historic building was demolished. Prior to that time, prior to the 1992 move there, um, the county had inspected it and found it sound enough for the historical commission to be in, but then they tore it down anyways. Now it's a parking lot. <clears throat> The first Fort Lauderdale post office building was located at Southwest 2nd on the corner of Southwest 4th Ave. It was designed by the local architect Francis Abreu in 1929. The building was torn down around 2004 and condominiums and office spaces were built on the site. The impressive second Fort Lauderdale Post Office was located on the southeast corner of Southeast 1st Ave and Southeast 2nd Street, where the city parking garage and college lots are today. <coughs> Excuse me. This building was a WPA project and was completed in 1937. It was torn down in 1974. This striking building was located at 4, 240 South Andrews Avenue in downtown Fort Lauderdale. The bank opened its doors in 1924. The building was torn down and the lot is now the site of the Fort Lauderdale Museum of Art. And that Woolworths building that's right adjacent to it, that building is still there and has been restored. So you can see that today. Fort Lauderdale's imposing Masonic Temple was located at Southeast 1st Street and Southeast 1st Avenue. The temple served as a meeting place, shelter, and soup kitchen after the devastating 1926 hurricane. And what I find interesting about this Masonic Temple, having my husband had been a, a Mason and his father as well, is they usually don't have the, this many windows in them. This had an extraordinary amount of windows for a Masonic temple. They must have used blinds. The Fort Lauderdale Beach House of Refuge was first incorrectly located on the beach east of Bonnet House and was then moved to where Bahia Mar is today. The house was built in 1876 and damaged beyond repair in, in the 1926 hurricane. It was one of 10 houses built along the east coast of Fort Lauderdale to provide refuge for shipwrecked sailors. One house still remains in Martin County and is run as a museum. That's well worth visiting. Very interesting site. They've done a fabulous job with it. Situated at the intersection of Atlantic Boulevard and East Las Olas Boulevard, this building was built in 1898 as a hunting and fishing lodge by Hugh Taylor Birch and his partner, John McGregor Adams. Senator Tom Watson of Georgia acquired the property in 1905 for use as a winter home. In 1915, David Clifford Alexander purchased the frame vernacular lodge, remodeled it and opened it as a hotel. As an inn, it housed, housed many prominent individuals visiting the area. It survived the 1926 hurricane and was the only beach hotel open to the public during World War II, as the others were commandeered by the military for either training or housing of the troops. The inn was dismantled and was replaced by a Holiday Inn in 1925. It is a parking lot today. The Victory Theater was located on Northwest 5th Avenue in Fort Lauderdale. And the theater served the city's African-American community. 
It opened around 1944 and was closed around 1972. Notice the British way of spelling the word theater on the top of the picture. The businesses clearly advertised having air conditioning, which was a huge draw in the days before everyone had air conditioner, air conditioning in their homes. The Clyde Beatty's Zoo was located in a rock pit on East Sunrise Boulevard, where the Gateway Shopping Center is today. It opened in 1939, but was forced out in 1945 due to the neighbor's noise complaints. Oral histories of staff collected in the Bonnet House archives mention hearing the sounds of lions roaring from the Bonnet House property. You could hear them all the way across the intercoastal and apparently monkeys would escape from there and cause trouble in the local neighborhoods. But see, when this was built, uh, there was nothing around it. And then as, as development moved in, people started complaining about the animals. The Seminole Indian Trading Post was located at 710 South Federal Highway around 1948. It was demolished around 1984 to make way for airport expansion and the change of, of the route of the Federal Highway. A tourist attraction, it featured alligator wrestling James Billy, the former chief of the Seminole Nation, was born there. Fort Lauderdale Naval, Naval Air Station buildings were located on the current site of Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport. They were built during World, World War II to serve various purposes. Only one building, the Link Trainer Building, survives today as the Naval Air Station of Fort, of Fort Lauderdale Museum. The museum building was restored and moved and is now located at 4000 West Perimeter Road and is open as a museum. And it's another museum that is here locally that's well worth visiting. They've done a really wonderful job in interpreting the uh, history of the Naval Air Station. In Fort Lauderdale. Uh, George W. Bush trained there as a pilot. The $2 million banyan tree was located at Wildwood Tropical Nursery and Garden on the north side of the Dania Cutoff Canal and facing west on North Federal Highway. Wildwood Tropical Nursery grew rare palms, ornamentals, and plants. They offered a tree crane service to remove unwanted trees or to move wanted trees to another location. The tree, the $2 million tree, was one of the most widely visited tourist sites in South Florida during the 1920s and 1930s. Everybody wanted to stop and have their picture taken by that really big tree. Uh, the site was owned by Commodore Book, Brook, who was a big, booster of Fort Lauderdale. Um, he was kind of like a one-man chamber of commerce. And his sister, Lady Claire Fursman, ran an elegant tea room on the property. Dania City Hall was located at 22 South Federal Highway. The city moved out in 1958, and the site is now a pharmacy on the site. The Margate Boathouse was built by Jack Marchese's company in 1955 as a sales office on the northeast corner of Margate Boulevard and West River Drive. The building served as city hall and headquarters for the Chamber of Commerce, among other things. In the 1990s, a movement to preserve it and make it into a historical museum began, but because of costs, the building was torn down in 2005 just in time for the city's 50th birthday. The Dania Public School was located on US-1 in downtown Dania and was built in the early 1920s. 
It was attended by children from both Hollywood and Dania. It was renovated after the 1926 hurricane and included Grecian columns. The structure was demolished around 1980 by the Broward County School Board. And this picture was how it looked in 1925. I love the old car in the bottom right hand corner. The Hollywood Hills School was built in 1926 and located at Longfellow Circle at 36 and Taft. Thomas D. McLaughlin was the architect. It was built on land located or donated by J.W. Young, the developer of Hollywood. It was demolished December 26, 1974. Efforts to save this building, although unsuccessful, spurred the creation of the Hollywood Historical Society. The Hollywood Central School was located at 1700 Monroe Street. It opened in 1925 and was demolished after a fire in 1968. The Hollywood Golf and Country Club was located at the northeast corner of 17th Avenue and Polk Street. It was built in 1924 and the architect was Martin Luther Hampton. It was torn down between 1960 and 1966. And again, the word casino meant it was a public gathering place. In this case, swimming was the major focal point. Uh, there could have been gambling there, but it was just more the word at that time meant social gathering place. There was a casino in Pompano, Fort Lauderdale and Hollywood. Located in today's presidential circle, the Hollywood Hills Inn was built in 1925. The structure became the Riverside Military Academy in 1931. It was torn down around 1985. Presidential Towers Apartments is there today. You can see the cadets out in the front practicing. The Hollywood Hotel was later known as the Parkview Hotel and was located on Young Circle. The hotel was built in 1922 and was designed by Rubish and Hunter. The building was demolished and replaced by a grocery and drugstore complex that you can see in the bottom picture. The Hollywood Golf and Country Club was located at the northeast corner of 17th Avenue and Polk Street. It was built in 1924 and designed by the architect Martin Luther Hampton. This lovely building was torn down sometime after 1984. And you can see it's all decked out with bunting. Must have been like some sort of holiday like Memorial Day or the 4th of July. The Hallandale Elementary School was located on the site of today's City Hall. It was built in 1916 and destroyed in, 19, in the 1920s by a mysterious fire. The Hollywood State Bank, was all, also known as the Sun Trust Bank, is located at 2001 Hollywood Boulevard in the National Register of Historic Places Historic District in Hollywood. It was designed by Rubish and Hunter in 1924. And there's a lot of controversy going on about this right now. Um, the Hollywood Historical Society wants to see it preserved. The facade has been greatly changed over the years, but the owner wants to tear it down and build something modern. So it's, it's currently in litigation or about to be in litigation. So there are groups like the Pompano Historical Society out there trying to preserve our landmarks. Um, and this is one of them that's in, in danger. And this is a, a tragic story here. Uh, Dr. McClellan's office um, was listed as his, a local historic uh, landmark by the Historic Preservation Board here in Pompano. Um, 
but the owner decided that on the weekend when no one was around, he was going to just tear it down anyways. And this is a picture of them tearing that lovely old building down. So we do the best we can to preserve things. Um, there are several different ways to designate a historic property. You can be a national landmark, which is like George Washington's house or Mount Vernon kind of thing. Uh, very difficult to get listed as that. You can be on the National Register of Historic Places, which um, is a wonderful uh, honor, but it doesn't preserve the site unless um, a federally funded project is going through and is going to affect the historic resource, like a, a highway or, or a dam or something like that. And in that case, uh, they have to do something like move the property. Um, and a lot of the uh, National Register sites, probably five of them in Broward County have been moved for various reasons. And once a property is designated on the National Register, if it's moved, it loses its designation until it reapplies uh, to the National Register to be reinstated. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Then there's uh, the Florida Master Site File, which is uh, kept up in Tallahassee, and it's a database of all sorts of historic resources, uh, cemeteries, bridges, archaeological sites and buildings. Uh, and that all it does is identify a historic resource. It does nothing to preserve it. As a matter of fact, a lot of the sites that were originally listed on the Florida master site files, especially old churches are gone today. Um, and that's because if a church is successful, it wants to expand. And so it tears down its old historic building and then builds a new modern building to house more parishioners. So, and then there's a county designation, which is kind of in limbo right now. It may have a little um, regulatory power. We'll see how that goes, but they're working on it. And the only way you can really preserve a historic resource is to have it designated locally by the local historic preservation board. And they have, depending on what the municipality's um, rules are, they have the ability to regulate, you know, what kind of windows you put in, what color you paint it. If you want to paint your historic house purple, they might not like that. Um, and you have to go before the board to make any significant changes. For example, Bonnet House, because it is a uh, uh, designated historic by the city of Fort Lauderdale. Anytime we make any big change to the property, uh, we have to go in front of the historic preservation board for the city of Fort Lauderdale and get approval. And sometimes they give it and sometimes they don't. Okay, well, um, thank you so much for coming. I don't know whether we have a, an ability to have questions. Sure, I have one question. Okay. Jim Post has a question. Are there, uh, you mentioned that the local historic preservation board can designate buildings or structures as historic and they can be preserved in that manner. Do any of the communities in South Florida have what we call in other areas of the country historic districts where a large section of a large group of properties within this boundary would be preserved? Yeah. I was asking about historic districts, and to my knowledge, there's only two in Broward County, one in downtown Hollywood, which if that bank building gets torn down, it may be in danger of being unlisted because that's part of all the historic resources for that district. And the other district is uh, Sailboat Bend, which is one of the first developments in Fort Lauderdale. But there aren't that many, not like up north. Right, right. Okay, well, thank you all for coming. Uh, I enjoyed doing this and uh, have a great day. Nice.